sup basically in this video we're going to be going through how to use dynamo to create an array of trees for a project and how to use dynamo to change the amount on the array for example now as you can see there's three trees here and three there I'm just changing this number slider here and reducing the amount along I'm telling Dynamo that I want more trees along this curve or less trees and it's doing it so let's say a client came up to you and he said he wanted a certain he didn't want a fence and he wanted a certain number of trees and he wanted to see the optimal amount of trees before you design your drawing um, let's look at it in 3d view quickly uh, this is where it looks more fun takes a bit longer for the computer to calculate and that's it um, I'm gonna show you how to do that so the idea of this is not to use this tool because the array tool may be faster but the idea is for you to learn this skill so that you can use it and develop it on and use it on more advanced um, projects and in more advanced tasks so I'm just gonna highlight everything and delete I'm gonna go back to site view and Revit um, by the way if you don't know how to launch Revit you go to man I mean Dynamo from Revit you go to manage and you it's there in 2017 onwards Revit Revit 2017 onwards but in previous versions it's in add-ins I believe so check both if you can't find it um, it's not Dynamo player that's something else entirely we'll talk about that in the future but um, just Dynamo. So I'm going to go to Graph View and go to Zoom Extents. As you can see, there's nothing there. Um, all I did in Revit was draw these splines in Site View. So go to whichever plan view you want to place your trees on. So it should be the ground level or the site level or whatever it is. And draw lines that you want to array so it may be curves like this or it may be straight lines anyway what i need to do first i'm going to come to graph view or node view that's what it's called right graph view and i am going to place down well i'm going to tell revit that these curves exist well yeah okay so select model element and we're going to change that later to elements so that it can do both at the same time but not now now I'll select and I will select this curve here now all dynamo is doing now is it's looking at the curve it's not doing anything because it's just staring at it now I need to add a node in to let to tell dynamo to help Dynamo to understand what that curve is. You're basically, it's almost like you're converting it from Revit format to Dynamo format. So I will insert elements dot element actually dot curve. Either one of these two should work. Um, so far, um, I believe they both work. They're, they're both the same to me I haven't seen any difference but I'm gonna use the top one and I'm gonna plug that into there now if I come here to geometry view and zoom extents you can see that my line now exists now dynamo is on the same page as me and it understands that this curve is here so I am going to place that there and leave it aside and now I'm going to tell dynamo which object I want to place along this curve but I'm not going to tell it to place it along the curve until later so just remember by the way this is my zero zero point um, for this project um, you'll see you'll understand why I mentioned that in a minute so I will say family type types stick that there that will 
get me all the families that are loaded into this project. By the way, it's better to have one Revit project open with one uh, Dynamo open from inside Revit. Don't open Dynamo separately. It's got to be open from Revit so that it is incorporated with Revit. Um, and if you only have one at a time open, it doesn't confuse the software. Anyway, unfortunately, it loads in every single family type, including your section markers and things like that. I'm just going to pick, go down to trees and pick red maple. Red ma Yeah, red maple. And now I'm going to say family instance by point. My point. And I'll plug that into there. So now Dynamo knows that I'm placing something. That's my family. This is the function to place it in the space. So, obviously, now, well, not obviously, but I'll say point by dot by coordinate. I only wanted x and y, that's why I didn't select that one in the first place. And you can see that it's placed a point down somewhere. And so, there you go. These are x and y have been defaulted to zero. I could add numbers in there and it will move this tree anywhere relative, relative to that point um, based on what I tell it. However, why I now need to tell Dynamo that I want this tree on this line. So how do I do that? I use a curve point at parameter function that will do exactly that so I'll place this curve here and I'll place the point there which will remove this and as you can see the tree is now placed on that point instead that is the beginning I mean well that is most of the work done so I'm gonna delete this now, you'll notice this parameter input function. I will insert a number slider. Plug that in there. Now, this parameter for this particular node should vary from 0 to 1. Point 0 is the start of the curve there, and point 1 is the end of the curve. If I extend it any further, let's say there, you can see that the tree is off far in space somewhere. There's my project. Whereas if it's at zero, it's back there. So I'm going to change this number slider from zero to one and step it up into 0.01s. Therefore, it moves along there. Now, that will just place it along on the line and you can move it along. However, I want to array it. So for that, I need to tell Revit a range of numbers. I don't just want one number, I want six or seven numbers. So I'll create a range command, a range node. Start is defaulted at zero, which is fine, which basically the start needs to be this start point here, the end needs to be that start point there. As we've seen, 0 is the beginning and 1 is the end. Anything past it will go off the curve. So the start point is defaulted at 0, the end point is defaulted at 9, which we need to change. So I'll put in a number there. I'll give it 1. I won't make it a slider because it's not so fun to play with. We just need it to be at 1. That's it. And now I want my range of numbers. Let me expand this down the list so that you can understand it more. Number slider. I'm going to add a slider for this one. And as you can see, if I go past one, there's just one number and it's zero. I'm going to put the maximum at one and step it in 0.1s.
This range is basically telling me or telling Dynamo to create a list of numbers for starting from 0, ending at 1, in steps of 0 0.1. So now at 0 0.2, the list shrinks because now every 0 0.2 we're adding. We're adding 0 0.2 until we get to the end. So I want Dynamo now to place my tree at 0 0.3 units or 30% of the distance along and then 60% and then 90% which is decimal for these numbers instead of this single tree. So I'll take the sequence and I'll stick it in the parameter and I'll remove this number slider because it's now obsolete. Now as you can see I'm changing this and it doesn't do anything the reason for that is to do with lacing. Lacing is something I don't fully understand yet. Well, I do fully understand it, but I don't understand it enough to be able to explain it. It's something to do with, if we expand this list down and pin it, I have one data point here, and I have three here. So, this what the top data point gets associated with this data point. The second one comes in, and there's no data. So... If I change the lacing to longest, it finds more data points. Why is that one over there? That's strange. Ah, I think it was a temporary glitch. Don't know what that was. But it's fine now. Cool. So, as I stretch this, stretch the steps. I reduce the amount, but when I reduce the amount of steps, I increase the amount of, of um, trees. However, that's only for this line. You've got to remember that. Let's say the client said he wanted the other line to be populated at the exact same rate. There's two ways you can do that. You can copy this. Control C. Oh, Control C. Control V. I was worried there because I accidentally did control X, which I don't know what that does. Oh no, it does something. <laughs> oh no, that's not. Sorry. Oh, I keep picking the node. I'm trying to move it. Right, sorry about that. Uh, I can now move this number slider and use it here. Oh, and I need to change that to look at that one instead, and it populates that one now. But the minimum uh, you want, well, it's good practice to keep your nodes minimal. So I'm going to delete all of this, and I'm going to change this to select model elements. Well, I'm going to put a new one in. Elements, not element. And I want to select this line and that line. The only thing is when you hit select, it doesn't let you pick lines individually. It makes you highlight a uh, range. So what I need to do first is I need to isolate those lines. Con I'll use tab to get that line and then hold control on that line. And then come here to temporary, just isolate them, select. And then I'll plug that into there instead, and it will populate those. And we'll have another problem with lacing. Reset this. Leave that. We're going to have another problem with lacing here. Um, because now there's multiple multiple lines. It's confusing it again. What we need to do is we need to change this to cross product. It's another issue I need to explain further. Um, there will be a link in the description below or to the side or wherever we are in the future um, in terms of the layout on YouTube and my website. Check the description. Um, I'll, I may have a video on lacing in the future. So that is how you do that. It's much faster, much more efficient to have less nodes. Well, not more efficient, it's just better practice and a little bit easier to look at. Um, and that is how you do that.
Um, if anyone tells you it's pointless, you can just use the array tool. You can use the array tool, but you need to learn these skills so that you can use them on more advanced tasks and projects in the future because the power of Dynamo is amazing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and please like and subscribe.